Hey guys, it's Aiden, aka Artsy with EDM Prod. Today I'm excited to be back to be giving you another tutorial. This one is going to be all about one of electronic and dance music's most ubiquitous sounds, I guess you could say, the Super Saw. This is going to be a really in-depth guide. We're going to go over everything you need to know, so make sure to stick around. Let's jump straight in. I've got Serum here, and one of the first things I want to talk about when it comes to making a Super Saw, I'll chuck this over here, is that... Uh, it really is dependent on the notes you play to get that really thick sound. You know, that's that's what you're trying to get with a super saw. Um, now, if you don't know what a super saw sounds like, this is the kind of general vibe. Let me just change a couple of my settings here, which I was playing with earlier. Right, so it's that very, um, pause that, that very thick euphoric kind of sound. And it really fills out the spectrum, sounds very fat, very wide. Let's just change this unison back to here. I'll get that to that in a second. But before we even get into the mechanics of the Super Saw, I just want to cover like chords and the voicing of the notes that you're playing with the Super Saw because it's very important. So uh, let's play these two examples here and you'll see what I mean. Right, that's pretty, pretty normal, pretty boring, but pretty solid, you know, very staple, I guess. But listen to this. versus that, right? You can hear the difference there. It makes such a big difference when you voice chords in a much thicker way. You know, you're not gonna get that thickness in, out of the sound if you're only playing, you know, a very boring uh, voiced chord. So this is a C uh, or a G sharp minor chord or A flat, depending on how you wanna say it. Um, that's just a standard inversion. Um, I'll leave a link to one of our uh, resources on chords and inversions if you want to check that out uh, but this is basically a much more um, you know open voicing of a chord it spans multiple octaves and it just gives it a really thick sound so essentially what I'm doing here is we've got um, let me just close serum for a second we can open this up we've got our note down on the low G sharp we've got up on here on G sharp one then we're just doing the fifth then we're doing the normal voicing, which is the same three notes we have over in this one. And then we're adding another G sharp on top. And this is what I like to call like thick voicing. I don't know if there's a technical term for it, but basically the way sound works is that the lower the notes go, the more space they need to sound good. Uh, that's why you'll notice as I get higher up, the voicing gets a lot denser. Because if I were to do this all down an octave and I'll show you what it sounds like, it sounds terrible. But up that octave, it sounds way better because we've kept this like lean down here and then we've really, um, you know, bunched things together at the top to give it that that harmonic density. Um, so that's really key in making a super saw. So using this, this uh, new voicing as an example, let's continue on with the actual sound design side of things. So I'm using Serum here. Um, we've got a standard super saw here. Now... One thing I'm going to mention is there's kind of different varieties of super saws you're going to make, and I'll, I'll kind of go into different ones as we go. But the main thing that characterizes a super saw is this unison control here, and you'll find this on like 90% of uh, you know wavetable or subtractive synths. Basically, you want to crank it up. Uh, now, Serum thankfully allows you to go up to 16. Um, one thing I will mention is that you don't have to use all of the voices. You don't have to feel like you need to use all 16 because that might not necessarily be the sound you're going for. So for example, I'm gonna start here on seven. Instantly better. So that really gives it that thick euphoric sound, right? Uh, now you might be wondering, well, why have you gone specifically for seven? Uh, the reason I've chosen seven or any odd number in general is because if you look at the graphic here, uh, you can see that central yellow voice there, it's mono, it's right in the center because what the unison and detune does in Serum is it spreads those voices. They It makes basically this oscillator and copies it with slight pitch differences across the spectrum. That's what those lines are seeing. You're seeing there, they're different slight pitches and the more detune you give them, the further apart the pitches are. But it also spreads them across the stereo field. That's why it sounds fat and wide. It's not just in the center. Uh, we'll get into stereo width and stuff later, but that's what gives it its width. And if you have two voices in the middle, your mono compatibility and your mono voice is going to be a lot less powerful because you've got two competing for that central voice. So just a little quick pro tip there. Now that we've just set, 
we've set this unison to seven, we can uh, look at the detune and kind of find an ideal amount of detune for this sound. Now, this is where um, I guess the characteristic of a super saw really shines through because you can add a lot more voices and that sounds thicker, right? <laughs> But for the most part, it's pretty similar. But the amount of detune really characterizes the thickness or the, um, you know, the inharmonicity, if that's a word, of the sound. So let's like listen to a few examples. Now, close together in the sense is that very like almost chorusy type effect. It's like more the pitches are closer together, so they sound really nice. But the further you go. And then I, you get to like the, you know, like Gabba days. And then you just get to like experimental ambient. Anyway, um, so you kind of want to find somewhere in between. You know, if you're going for that really old school dirty sound, you can get away with about like... That kind of thing there. Um, I personally like... Somewhere around there. Um... But yeah, now one thing I quickly want to mention before we move on to the next part, I'm going to turn this one off here. I just copied it to B. You can actually switch up the waveform. And this is really useful if you're going for more of an analog kind of saw. Um, there's a lot of great built-in wavetables that kind of mimic, you know, su subtly change the sound of the saw. Um, you know, they just sound a little bit more harmonically different. This one's quite bright. This one's a little duller. Um, but yeah, you can go through, find a nice thing. Saws are normally the basis of this sound, but you can use squares. They just sound a little bit more um, jarring uh, because of their, the way the harmonics are structured in a, so a square wave. That's just a little pro tip there. Back to our other example though, we're going to now talk about stereo field. So as, you, as we said earlier, you can hear it spreads over the stereo field. If we head to the global section in Serum, uh, this is a unique thing to Serum. I'm not sure if you can do this in other synths, but you can adjust this width. That just controls the amount of uh, essentially, uh, you know, how far those voices are spreading over the spectrum. The problem with unison is that if you have it all mono, uh, a lot of those saw waves that are slightly detuned are going to be competing for that same space. Whereas if you spread it over the spectrum, it sounds a bit nicer. So that's a little pro tip there. Um, the general uh, idea here is though that you don't want to be adding too many extra stereo effects. Uh, a lot of people might add reverb and that's kind of okay, but I wouldn't be going and adding choruses, phases and flanges to like an already detuned sound unless you're doing it in like a mono kind of version or you really know how you're uh, working the stereo field. I think it really requires a lot of knowledge about how stereo information works, which I'm not going to cover in this video, but be careful with stereo effects. Remember that by default, this is already a stereo sound. Uh, one thing you can do with stereo effects though, for example, if we were to... Uh, duplicate this sound. I'm just going to delete this first part so we don't get confused. Uh, let's say I just wanted to uh, have these top three notes, right? Uh, now, this kind of leads into my next section, which is how to uh, layer Super Source. We can do something different with this upper layer to kind of give it a bit more, uh, you know, this, this whole texture a bit more interest. Um, one thing I think I'll do is perhaps try upping the unison for this high layer, maybe giving it a bit more width than unison. Um, first of all, that's really going to open up the high end of this sound. And I think I'm also going to layer in some high noise into this thing. Um, one thing I really like in Serum is this bright white preset uh, of noise. It just, it just, you can hear right there, it just fills out the spectrum so nicely. Uh, it's really good if you're wanting to get that energetic sound out of a super saw. So let's layer it with our other one. And that's really key in layering right there. Um, one thing we can also do is just to cut out any of the, uh, the high end uh, is... Just to 
cleaned it up a bit. Um, unfortunately, the high filters in uh, Serum kind of cut the low end up. So one thing you can do, uh, cut the high end up rather. So you can just kind of boost it there to kind of, with the EQ to kind of give it a bit more character. You can also even do like an octave layering um, if you want to. So we could put this one up the octave. Blend it a bit with the volume. You can even go this higher one up to 15 voices. Send that through, send that through the filter. And that really layers it up nice and thick. You know, that's really key in layering. Like we've done something similar, but different. It's filling up a different part of the sound. Uh, so that's really key in layering super sources. We could even change these to other wavetables. We could process them with different effects. We could add a third layer, or like to add some texture, but really know what you're doing with each layer. Like for example, the other thing is I didn't use all these notes. Cause if we were to use all these notes, We're just competing for space. Um, I'm really targeted with what this layer is doing, uh, which is one common thing a lot of producers do. They just copy over the same notes for each layer. Uh, especially when you're making super stores, you need to be very intentional about what each layer is doing. Otherwise, you can very easily, you know, there's a fine line between clean, full super saw and very messy super saw. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Now, quickly back to the noise thing. Uh, one thing, if you are going for that more, I guess, analog super saw, we can switch back to this one. Um, go open this one as well. We can use like some more, you know, once again, interesting, interesting uh, wavetables to kind of make it a bit more harmonically different. You could use a different noise as well. That bright white is very digital and very high and bright, but if you wanted to use something a bit more subtle, like uh, let's listen to what we've got here. Like this chorusy noise, that's really nice. Open it up to get a bit more uh, sound there. We can still add that high end if we want. Change this to another sound. Um, Yeah, that's what, this little way to get some extra difference in the sound, but we'll cover some more kind of analog techniques as well later on. Now, one thing with uh, layering, I'll quickly mention as well that it, when you're layering sounds, if we were to say, for example, we're gonna add like a third layer here, just with this top note, just to really like highlight that melody kind of line. Um, let's kind of like change up the sound completely. Like, let's use this, it's a bass, but you can. I'm gonna also um, init the modulation so it's very, like, not moving. You really want the ADSR of these sounds to be similar. You Like, see how this, and then this sound here, when I load it up, they have a very similar ADSR envelope. Um, you, can, oop, you can see here, that one and that one. Uh, they they're gonna glue to a lot together to better when they're going to glue better together when the ADSR envelopes are the same. It's like imagine if you're trying to make like a really cool piano sound. The piano sound's not gonna really sound like a piano unless the ADSR is similar. Um, I mean, there could be a little bit of difference for that kind of subtle, natural feel, but you generally speaking want the same layers. To have the same ADSR. You could layer this up an octave. This is a mono sound though, so we'd have to like. You get the point. 
There we go. I'm going to delete this one now because it's not exactly what I want, but you get the point. Great, and that pretty much covers most of a super saw. For the last bit of this tutorial, I'm just going to go over a few of my tips and tricks to take your super saw sounds even further. Um, if we just mute this layer for a second, one thing you can do that's really cool is, and it's common in a lot of like future bass music, is like this whole, uh, you know, like LFO modulating uh, super saws uh, gives it that really. If we set this to like a tempo of like 150, which is pretty standard, I'm meant to do this. Um, you kind of get that really cool, like plucky kind of effect. You don't have to just have these big drawn out chords. Um, obviously you could apply this to like something like a filter. Um, that's really, really common in a lot of like future bassy kind of genres where they get those filters, those envelopes and they kind of just add some interest to the super source, which I think is really cool. Um, but yeah, I think another tip is like, try try making like super source with less voices where possible. Like we can, you can even get away with like these three voice super source, which are like still dense, but they're a lot clearer and a lot more like I guess cut through the mix a bit easier, whereas the bigger super saws are a bit more ambiguous. Yeah, that's another tip I like to use is is always less is more with super saws. I feel like it feels like you want to add 16 voices on everything. That's not necessarily the way to go, uh, in my opinion. Anyway, another another temptation with super saws is like just to be very like stop stop and then start with them. Um, let me just bring this voice back. But play like like it's more of a compositional technique. But like, play with the um, play with like the rhythm of the notes you're playing. You know, like you could do a cool pattern like this. Maybe even go back a bit, like. You know, like, that's a bit funner, you know? Like, this is now we're getting something a bit different with the Super Saw. You know, we could copy this over here, do it with the high notes. We would have to do the same modulation, which is fine. Do it with the filter. That's really cool. I really like that um, effect. It's like a really glitchy kind of effect, but it's just a lot more interesting now. And the last thing is I just just some subtle ways to make it again once more a lot more analog. You can also use LFOs to kind of do like pitch changes as well, like just adding an extra layer of detune. Usually like a fast kind of. Um, same. Use a free. And then if you're using like multiple oscillators in the same synth, you can like just drag the whole the whole thing and like detune it by a little bit. I'm gonna add this LFO here as well and then bring this one up eight cents and that way you just get you just get a lot thicker of a sound. Uh, another really cool thing you can do in the global settings, particularly of Serum, is changing this um, mode. I think really cool one personally I like is random. Um, we can change it to that for both. And that just, as you can see here on the detune, it makes the... If we crank up the voices back to seven as well. I don't know. It just sounds a lot more, I guess, because the voices are random. It just... It's thicker, it's a bit more inconsistent, and it just really sounds a lot more analog to me. I really think that's cool. Um, 
And another really cool thing as well, I'll do it on this higher layer so I can show you a bit better is uh, you can change the stack mode uh, of this entire thing. So you kind of give it another, basically another layer of detune. So that's with it. That's with it off. You can even do higher. And you can use these other modes as well. There's other ways basically of detuning the voices so that, you know, they kind of either start out. And that way, basically, you're just doing something different and finding different ways to fill out the spectrum. And of course, last is the post-processing. I think, um, you know, there's a lot of cool effects in Serum, like reverb and delay are very key in like... In getting that sound, cutting out the lows to make sure you're leaving that space very free. Just adding a bit of space. And then a lot of people also like to use the multiband compressor as well to get that kind of OTT sound. That's if you're running that kind of squish super saw sound. You could group it and even use it like the, the plugin or the preset version on a group. Just, just glues everything together a bit more. Um, yeah, and that's basically a few different takes you can use on Super Source. Uh, I hope you guys learned something new about this, you know, very common sound in electronic music today. Uh, hope you learned more than just how to make one, but how to make it your own, how to make something unique out of it. If you like this video uh, and you want more content from myself or the EDM Prod team, make sure to subscribe for future videos. Like this video if you liked it, it really helps us out. And leave a comment if you have any suggestions for future videos or if you, there's any tips that you like about Supersaws. I mean, I'm always learning, other people are always learning, so always down for that. And apart from that, we'll see you in the next video. Peace out, guys. Have a good one. See you then.